my friends, let's talk about guitar technique today. In this video, I'd like to show you 10 guitar technique life hacks. These guitar technique adjustments brought me pretty life-changing results in the last couple of years. So let's go through all of them step by step right now, because I'm quite sure that they will make your life much easier from now on and your guitar skills much better in just 10 minutes. So today's first topic concerns string muting and unwanted noise in general. You guys and girls actually voted for this topic on Patreon once again this month. So for this video I dialed in a pretty heavily distorted guitar tone. For this video I'm using the Easy Mix 2 plugin from Toontrack once again and I'm going with the modern metal expansion unsurprisingly with the tone called Shred. And maybe you tried recording or playing with a sound like that as well and got the following results. But you actually want to sound like this. So you want every note to sound clearly without all that nasty string noise. So here are the main two technique tricks you can apply to get rid of that annoying string noise forever. So when we play a scale position like this, we often tend to move away the last finger like that. It's almost an instinct to remove your fingers from the fretboard when you're done playing on one string and transition to the next string. But you actually don't have to perform big movements like that when you're done playing on one string. As you can see, my movements are very small and relaxed, especially when I'm playing fast, so you don't see that kind of pull of motion when I transition to the next string. And another technique trick when I'm performing scale runs like this is how I position my index finger on the next string. I'm slightly touching the D string right here, although I'm playing on the G string. So even if there would be some kind of unwanted pull of motion or something like that, the D string is actually slightly muted because I'm touching it with my index finger. So that also really helps me with avoiding that unwanted noise when it comes to string changes. And the second technique trick is the one that fixed the issue for me once and for all. This one is about making sure that you're not touching the strings with your fingers or knuckles as you're playing. So when I'm playing like this and my fingers are rubbing against the strings, you can hear a lot of string noise and it's also actually starting to hurt already. But that's actually how I used to play not so long ago. So I always needed a fret wrap or a string dampener or just a sock in order to record clean guitar takes with high distortion. But now since I made sure that my fingers and knuckles are not touching the strings when I'm playing, I don't have any muting problems anymore and I don't need a fret wrap anymore. The second technique trick is extremely helpful for all players that feel like they don't get consistent results out of their picking motion. So maybe you feel like you can play very fast and controlled on one day, but then on the next day your technique and motion completely falls apart at certain BPM steps. And here's how I personally solved this mystery concerning my technique. As we discussed in previous videos, I prefer playing with a closed hand. If you missed out on all the benefits of this technique approach and the before and after comparison when I switched from open hand to closed hand, subscribe to the channel right now because I'm posting videos like this one every single week. That way you won't miss important technique information like that anymore. This will save you tons of wasted practice hours and it might just change your guitar journey and life forever. That's what this is all about. But what I actually want to show you today is that I got much better and more controlled results with my picking technique. As soon as I stopped moving the individual fingers and joints when I was picking. So when I started playing and getting into alternate picking it looked like this. So when I started out there was a lot of movement going on with my thumb but also with my index finger and that was the main reason for me why I got good picking results on one day and bad picking results on the next one. There was simply no real system or method behind this kind of picking madness and when you're playing that way you can't really expect the same results with every practice session, gig or recording job. So I instantly got much better and more controlled results with stiff picking hand fingers like that. When I'm playing I'm not making a fist like that and I'm not tensing up. I'm I'm really just closing my hand like this. That also means that I can kind of support my index finger with the other fingers. I'm not just playing like this. And since I got rid of that index finger and thumb movement, <laughs> 
I got much better and more consistent results even with this big white pick. I usually play much smaller jazz three size picks, but I think you can see all the movements and details a bit better with this one. That's why I'm using it in this video. Here's an awesome picking exercise for you that you can practice to work on this. This one is especially great when it comes to avoiding all that unnecessary finger movement. If you want to try the closed hand approach, try to support your index finger with your other fingers like this and try not to move your index finger and thumb like this. As always, you can find all your practice files like the backing tracks, the exercise video play alongs, the PDF tabs and guitar profiles on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash band. All members over there also have access to my most recent full online guitar courses and also to my personal feedback, of course, in case you feel like you're stuck with your technique at the moment. So before we move on to fretting hand technique, I want to show you one more technique trick when it comes to your picking motion. So since the latest episode on string transitions, I got a lot of frustrated messages on Patreon. Almost all of them were about one of the most challenging string transitions, ending with an upstroke on the lower string and then having to play a downstroke on the higher string. So for example, just playing four chromatic notes on the G string and then the next note with a downstroke on the B string. So why is this actually so challenging? Well, you're playing four notes on the lower string, that's simple enough, but then you have to jump over the string that you're playing on to get to the next string, to the B string in that case. And when you start practicing this, you will always accidentally touch the G string as well. So you want this sound, but you get this sound. So one easy technique trick that has helped me with solving this problem is just thinking about it like a snapping motion that I'm performing with my picking hand. So I'm playing downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke and then the snapping motion like this. The reason for that is that it helps me to internalize that I have to perform this kind of upwards motion after the last uh, upstroke on the G string. So right here I'm still connected to the bridge with my palm but my pick is in the air and it's not stuck in between the strings and I really feel this movement with my wrist even when I'm playing very fast. I feel this upwards movement and then that kind of snapping motion downwards. Here's an example of how you could actually practice this in your routine. I also made exercise video play alongs and backing tracks in lots of different tempos on Patreon. Downloading them will help you out a lot with mastering this picking technique challenge. So what's the most important tip concerning fretting hand technique that I could possibly give you? So my personal biggest light bulb moment is that you don't need a strong grip in order to play fast. I actually work with an extremely light grip when I'm playing. And that really helps me with feeling each individual finger and with playing very fast without getting exhausted quickly. So I don't feel any pain or any kind of weird burning sensation in my wrist. But with this extremely important topic, you have to fight your brain and your instincts a little bit. Because if there's a fast and challenging lick coming up in a song, you're naturally tensing up trying to get it right. And this really stands in the way of developing good guitar technique. So in your next practice routine, it would be awesome if you would focus on how light your grip can actually be. So you're really just placing your fingers on the fretboard like this and you start playing without applying tons of pressure like this. And I promise you, you will be very surprised when you find out how light your grip can actually be. Here's a very helpful exercise concerning that that you can implement in your current practice routine. This one is from a recent technique episode on the channel and it's all about feeling and relaxing all of your fingers. And of course your biggest focus is playing it with a very light grip. All right, let's do a picking technique quick fire round because there's still a lot of stuff I want to show you in this video. For me personally, it's very hard to pick fast and controlled with a parallel angle like this. This also makes string transitions quite difficult. So I get much better results when I tilt my pick like this at an angle. Here's a direct comparison. I will try to play with the parallel angle now. So this was very difficult for me and that makes it hard for me personally to develop speed and I also tend to touch the other strings when I play this way. So there's a lot of string noise. And here's what happens when I angle the pick like this. 
So I suddenly feel like I'm gliding across the strings and the transitions become very easy for me. That really made a huge difference for me a couple of years ago. Now here's the next picking technique trick and this one concerns the movement of the pick in general. So when I'm playing with this picking angle that I just showed you, I actually try to feel the picking motion as an up and down movement like that. Because one picking mistake that can really slow you down is developing this kind of angular movement. So when your pick is kind of jumping back and forth like this. An angular approach like this is okay when it comes to string transitions so that you avoid getting stuck between the strings. But when you're just playing on one string for example and you have this kind of movement, it's very hard to speed up your playing because there's a lot of unnecessary movement. And what really helps me with avoiding this kind of movement is imagining the motion like this and feeling the motion like this, like an up and down movement. As opposed to something like this. Yeah, that is very hard to speed up and a lot of string noise as well. And the last picking technique trick for now concerns how much of the pick you're actually using when you're playing. So maybe you've seen this already when I'm playing I like to work with the tip of my pick because if I would play like this so with a lot of the pick sticking out I feel like I need a lot more power because I'm really digging in with my pick and I'm using a lot of it. And for me personally that also makes string transitions much harder because as you probably know by now you don't want to get stuck in between the strings. And all of this gets much easier for me when I'm just working with the tip of my pick. Alright, let's do another quickfire round for fretting hand technique. These are the three most important technique tricks that you should keep in mind when it comes to your fretting hand technique skills. So what's extremely important right away, especially for legato, so for hammer-ons and pull-offs, is how the fingers are actually coming in contact with the strings. So which area of your fingertips are you actually using to play the notes on your fretboard? I mostly use the area that's close to my fingernails when I'm playing, so not the big fleshy part right here. So it mostly looks like this when I'm playing. You can see the curled angle of my fingers. I'm not playing like this. But it can also really slow you down when you're playing like this, so when you're using the big fleshy parts of your fingertips to play. This might be kind of okay for string bending and vibrato to really dig in with your fingers, but if you want fast, clean and controlled hammer-ons and pull-offs, you definitely want to make sure to work with this area of your fingertips and not with the big kind of fleshy one down here. If you're a part of our YouTube community you might know about the next trick but I still have to include it on this list because it's very important. Playing like this is great for expressive string bending and vibrato but it's pretty much impossible to stretch when your thumb is placed over the neck like this but as soon as I move it back down in the area around my middle finger I can suddenly stretch like this or <laughs> even like that if I want to. So obviously playing something like this would be completely impossible with this kind of approach. And the final and probably most important fretting hand technique topic concerns economy of motion. We discussed this with different exercises on the channel already but this is so important because obviously it will be very hard for you to play fast and controlled if your fingers are constantly bending away from the fretboard like this when you're playing, especially that flying pinky finger. Additional wrist movement like this, so rocking your wrist back and forth can also be very problematic. Yeah, as you can see that's a lot of unnecessary movement and you end up with a lot of string noise. So it's very important for me to keep my fingers as close to the fretboard as possible when I'm playing in order to play fast, clean and controlled. Much better than... I think you can hear the difference right away. So here's an awesome economy of motion exercise for your practice routine. This one is played with alternate picking to make it more challenging and the main goal is keeping your fretting hand fingers as close to the fretboard as possible. So you're barely lifting them and that will train your fingers to stick closely to the fretboard as you're playing and you will see some great results with this one after a couple of practice sessions. It's a really awesome and effective exercise. Alright my friends, don't forget to get all your practice files for today's exercises on patreon.com slash bernd right now to finally take your guitar technique to a professional level over the next couple of weeks. I promise it's not tedious, it's actually a lot of fun to work on this. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the next tips and exercises. Your random or not so random German word for today is Technik. That obviously means technique, so you know the drill. Make sure to comment that one down below to confuse everybody who's not watching these videos until the end. And I will see you again in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye bye. 
Great news, my friends. I'm finally on Spotify to provide you with some awesome guitar music and shredding. You can already listen to my first full-length album, Elevation. And there's plenty more exciting music in the making for you right now. So make sure to follow me on Spotify today. The link is in the description or you can just search for my name.